Kia ora, welcome back, I'm the Kiwi Coder, and in this video I will show you how you can add weapon reload into your character using animation events. Uh, so the magazine is first attached from the weapon and then dropped using physics and finally reattached to the weapon. And because the magazines have got physics, uh, they can actually be shot around uh, the environment, which is quite cool. And uh, there's also a UI element which displays how much ammo the uh, the weapon has left and the character will automatically reload um, when that ammo count reaches zero or when you press R on the keyboard. Cool, so uh, yeah, let's get into it. So this video follows on from a previous video I've made, the weapon recall patterns using override transform constraint. Um, so in the scene here I've got a character and it's got a weapon and the first thing to do is just attach a new object to the weapon um, which will be the magazine. and um, will create an animation where the character will, uh, using its left hand, um, put, detach the magazine from the weapon and then reach out over here, drop the magazine, then reach to the thigh, reload the magazine and then finally reach back to the weapon and reattach the magazine. Um, so the first thing to do is attach a new object to the weapon prefab, um, which will be the magazine object. Um, so I'm just going to use uh, the Plasma 2 from the Sci-Fi pack and I'm just going to unpack the prefab completely uh, just because I like to do that. Um, and yeah, just uh, position it somewhere that kind of makes sense about there. Cool. Um, so this will be the object that will attach, uh, sorry, detach during the animation and then reattach. Um, because the, the rest of the weapon is just a single mesh, it's got like a few different parts, um, like this thing here. But uh, yeah, this is the object that we're going to detach and reattach. Um, so we just need to get a reference to this object inside the Raycast weapon script. Um, so just create a new property on the Raycast weapon script, which we'll assign in the inspector. <clears throat> so this will be public game object uh, magazine, and then just assign that in the inspector here when it reloads, like that. Cool. Um, so yeah, now if I hit play, should be able to see that in the scene. Yeah, so now uh, there's this uh, magazine object, and this will be the this will be the one that we're gonna um, yeah remove from the weapon during the reload animation. So the next step is actually uh, going to be creating that animation. Okay, so just start by creating a new animation, and this is going to be called weapon underscore reload underscore assault. Um, I've created a pistol one already, which I'll hook up later, but um, we'll create this one from scratch. Um, so, yeah, to edit this animation, it needs to exist inside a uh, an animator. So I'm going to put this inside the rig controller because this is where the rest of the weapon animations are. Um, so I can just drag that weapon reload assault in here. Um, I'll hook up the transitions later, but for now this is enough to let us edit the animation. So if I just hit play and then go and pick up a weapon. <clears throat> um, now in the scene view, where is the character? I can select the rig layers and then open up the animation window and just dock this down here. And now I should be able to select that weapon reload assault. Cool, um, so I'm just going to hit record and the first thing I want to do is basically lower the lower the, um, the gun so the character has got a little bit more space to work with and I'll do that by modifying the weapon pivot position. Uh, so I'll just rotate this down a little bit, uh, just move it down so it's kind of still roughly attached to the shoulder, it doesn't have to be exact. Um, and just sort of aim it in a little bit this way and just move that back to the shoulder. Something, something like that. So this is the first part of the animation um, and it basically looks like this. Uh, yeah, so the, the character just lowers the gun getting ready to reload and then um, the next stage is going to be moving the hand to the magazine. So to do that I'm going to modify the uh, left hand grip position. So I can just do that by moving the, uh, the position of the hand here and notice I'm using the local space I find this is a lot better to work with uh, when doing animations uh, because if it's all in sort of global space you get some pretty weird rotations and stuff happening and the hand can uh, spin around like crazy sometimes. So yeah, I try to work in local space, sometimes it's not always possible. Um, yeah, the other thing is this is probably not the best way to create a reload animation but I don't know how to use Blender yet, I've been meaning to learn. Um, but this is kind of the tools I have to work with. So 
this is what I'm going to show you. But the rest of the video is still applicable if you already have a reload animation. Okay, so that's cool. And I'm just going to copy the left and the right hand positions and just uh, um, paste them into this keyframe here, just so that left hand doesn't move while um, while the character lowers the gun. So that's the first part of it. And then the character moves their hand to the magazine. And at this point, we'll uh, detach the magazine, but that will be done with animation events that we'll hook up later. I'm just going to create the whole animation now, so uh, feel free to skip this bit if you already have an animation. Um, so the next the next part of it, I kind of like to keep these intervals um, roughly the same to sort of like keep the the rhythm of the uh, the animation uh, kind of constant, I guess. It's uh, I don't know some something I found kind of useful. So yeah, just kind of move the arm out. <laughs> this is like, it's pretty awkward trying to animate like this. And yeah, if you know how to use Blender, I'd recommend uh, creating your reload animation in a proper animation software. Um, the other way is maybe you could actually modify the, uh, the actual joint positions of the character rather than using this uh, two, hand, two bone IK constraint thing. Um, but yeah, that's kind of roughly the position where the character will be dropping the magazine. So that's good. Um, so yeah, if we just have a look back what we've done so far. So character lowers the weapon, it then moves its hand to the magazine, it then like drops the magazine. The next part is basically moving the hand to the thigh, which is going to be roughly down here somewhere. Uh, something like that. <clears throat> um, yeah, like that. And then I might just uh, quickly kind of like pretend like I'm reaching into the pocket or something like that. Um, and then pulling something out of the pocket. And at this point, we'll uh, refill the magazine into the character's hand. And now the hand needs to move back to that original position, so which was here. So I'm just going to copy these keyframes and paste them like here. Okay, so how does all of this look? So lower the gun move the hand to the magazine, move the hand out, drop the magazine, move the hand to the leg, reach into the pocket, pull something out. <laughs> um, oh, that looks a little bit funny. Just going to copy that keyframe and paste that back there. So yeah, reach into the pocket, pull something back out, maybe up a little higher. Re reach in the pocket and pull something back out and then move the hand back to the magazine, which will then reattach. And now uh, reattach the magazine to the weapon at this point and the final step is just putting everything back to how it was so the next part the hand needs to go back to this position so you can just keyframe copy those keyframes and paste them back in and finally it needs to go back to the original position so I can just copy that and keyframe that back in <clears throat> okay so how does all this look <laughs> it looks pretty funny but <laughs> um, that's it that's it that's what I'm going with okay and I'm just gonna stretch this out and make it about two seconds long for a reload animation yeah I think it'll look a lot cooler when the magazines actually detached but yeah they'll do for now okay so now we just need to hook up the uh, like a, a transition so when we push uh, R on the keyboard that's going to trigger the uh, reload animation so just open up the rig controller well don't know why that's so zoomed in um, and yeah we just want to create a transition from the equip state to the reload state and we're going to use a animation parameter to do this um, it's going to be a trigger parameter so just create a new one of them and call it reload weapon and then set that trigger parameter as the condition down here. Um, so yeah, we can turn exit time off because it shouldn't automatically transition. Um, and just set the transition duration to zero so there's no blending between these states. Cool, and now we just need another transition when the reload animation finishes uh, to transition back to the equip state. Um, so that uh, should have the exit time checked because we'll automatically transition back when it finishes playing. Uh, transition duration is zero, um, so the exit time should be one because we want to transition immediately as soon as the reload animation finishes. And if we uh, transit, if we left the transition offset as zero, then it would transition to the beginning of the equipped animation, which would uh, replay the whole animation where it pulls the weapon from the character's back. 
So we actually just want to go to the last frame of that animation. So to do that, we set it to one and you can see here, um, the final state will be the end of the equip animation. Um, and the other thing is just turn the right defaults off on the weapon reload assault state. Um, that just means when this when it does this transition it won't write out all the uh, scene default uh, values it will just leave whatever uh, the previous animation wrote, wrote to the the character if that makes sense hope it does and uh, to trigger that animation parameter we're just going to create a new uh, reload weapon scripts on the character um, so just create a new one of them and yeah, we need to get a reference to the rig controller. Um, so just open up that script and create a new uh, public property called animator rig controller. And then inside update, just check if input.get key down key code dot r. <clears throat> and then just set the rig controller, set that trigger parameter that we created before called reload weapon. Cool. So we just test this out in the scene. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I need to. Sorry, I forgot to assign it here. Um, just need to assign that rig controller here. Push play. And so now, if I push R on the keyboard, yeah, it correctly plays the reload animation and then returns to the last frame of the equipped animation, which is the state the character is in now. Cool. Okay, so now we just need to hook up some animation events to that reload animation. Um, so just select, uh, actually I'll go into play mode so I can preview the animation and just show you what I'm talking about as I go along. Um, where is the character? Cool. So yeah, just select the, uh, the rig layers and then select the reload assault animation. And the first animation event will happen on this keyframe here when the, the character uh, gets the magazine we need to basically detach the magazine at this point and on the next keyframe out here we need to drop the magazine so just create animation events on on these keyframes uh, the next thing to happen is refilling the magazine um, and the final animation event will be on this keyframe here where we will uh, attach the magazine um, so <clears throat> these animation events they need a function uh, but it just says no function selected and that's because it's looking for a public function on the same game object that this uh, animator exists on that this animation is playing on which is the rig controller um, so just need to come out of this and create a new um, a new script called weapon animation events and this script needs to contain a public function that can be invoked from the those animation events uh, so just get rid of all this craft here and just create a new function called like on animation event and this will take an event name as a string parameter and um, what we need to do is actually forward this uh, this event name onto another script um, because uh, this weapon animation event it doesn't really have access to any of the active weapon scripts or anything that all exists on the character so we need to forward all of the animation events onto this uh, this reload weapon script. Um, so to do that, we're going to use a Unity event. Um, so just need to create a new class here, um, public class uh, animation event, and this should inherit from Unity event. This is yeah just a, quite a nice <coughs> way of like yeah passing information around. Um, so this animation event just need to create a new uh, public property here called uh, I'm just going to call it like weapon animation event and need to create that with new because it's not a serializable type I haven't tagged this as serializable um, and the final thing is actually just to invoke this event uh, using that event name and now the when the <coughs> the uh, sorry if I go back to the animation clip on the animator here, select the reload assault. Now inside these um, animation events, we can actually select that on animation event function that we made and we can pass it as string, which will get passed to this function here. 
and then it will get forwarded on by invoking this animation event which will hook up to the reload script in a second. Um, but first we just need to fill out the values for these strings. So the first animation event is going to be detaching the magazine. Um, the second animation event is going to be dropping the magazine. Uh, the third animation event is going to be refilling the magazine. And the final animation event is going to be attaching the magazine. So all of these string parameters, they're going to get passed through to this function here uh, via the event name, and then they're going to get forwarded on uh, to this through this animation event. Um, so we need to just hook that up uh, to the reload script. So the reload script now needs a reference to um, that new script that we just made, the weapon animation events. So it's a mouthful animation events. And inside start, just going to call uh, weapon animation event dot add listener and this needs to take a function with a string as an argument um, so we just need to create a new function I'm just going to call this on animation event string event name and you can just pass the name of that function as the argument to add listener um, so the final thing is just to <coughs> uh, actually assign this weapon animation events in the inspector so on the character third person under the reload weapon script we can just assign the uh that weapon this weapon animation events script here is getting assigned to the reload weapon script cool um so final thing is just can log that event name and now we should see all of those strings inside coming from the animation clip uh, get printed out when when we play the reload animation so if I just grab a weapon and then hit reload and just check the console uh, I don't think that's anything to do with me um, yeah there's detach magazine drop magazine refill magazine and attach magazine cool um, so just to make it a little bit more manageable I'm gonna also make a switch statement here which is going to switch on the event name and I'm just going to call a function for each one of the cases which I'll just do really quickly now cool so yeah now I've just got the switch statement one for each of the animation parameters and that will in turn call each one of these functions here okay just let me uh, close this animation window shouldn't need that anymore um, so the next stage is just uh, we need to get a reference to the active weapon and the left hand inside the reload weapon script um, because that's what we'll need to attach the magazine to the left hand so first just create a new property called the active weapon and another one which will be the transform which will be the left hand and this is where we will attach the magazine to um, so you can just assign these in the inspector this active weapon and the left hand should be the left hand here cool um, and now we just need to create one more function on the active weapon scripts uh, a public function uh, which will return the active weapon um, so I'm gonna call that get active weapon and we can just use this function here get weapon um, return get weapon at the active weapon index and now we can get the active weapon from outside of the script so we'll use that inside detach magazine to get the active weapon called what is it active weapon dot get active weapon yeah and <clears throat> what we're going to do is hide the weapon on the magazine uh hide the magazine on the weapon and then make a copy of it and attach it to the left hand so i'm going to create a new temporary sort of game object which will be private and this is going to be called like magazine hand it's basically going to be the magazine in the character's hand um, so we can create one of them by instantiating making a copy of uh, the magazine on the weapon um, and attach it to the left hand as the parent and if we specify true as this world position stays uh, then the position of the new game object is going to be in the exact same position as the uh, the magazine on the weapon except it's going to have a different parent which will be the left hand um, but it will look like it's in the exact same position 
even though they have different parents. Um, so the final bit is actually just hiding the magazine on the weapon. So you can just use set active uh, equal to false. And now if we go back into the um, inspector, not the inspector, go back into play mode. And if I grab a weapon, hit reload, quickly pause it. Uh, I've got spacebar hooked up to pause by the way and <clears throat> I can just step it and we should see with any luck Ta-da! So now the magazine, what's happened um, if I, Can I like click this? Yeah So there's a new magazine that's been instantiated as a child of the hand and the magazine on the weapon here uh, this one here, it's actually still there, it's just hidden. So there's actually two magazines now. Um, so the next step is going to be, uh, we're going to make another copy of this magazine, but this time with physics, and we'll drop that one. So that will be done inside drop magazine. Let me just come out of play mode. So inside uh, drop magazine, we just need to create a new game object, um, which will be the dropped magazine and you can create that using instantiate and we'll instantiate uh, basically clone the magazine that's in the character's hand um, because it's in world space we need to pass in the transforms position and uh, sorry rotation and <clears throat> now we can just attach some uh, physics to that new object uh, by calling add component and then just attach a new rigid body and call add component attach a new box collider Cool, and um, now the final step is when we drop the magazine, we just want to hide the magazine that's in the character's hand. So we can just call uh, set active false. And I'll just fill out the rest of these functions while I'm here. So when we refill the magazine, this one's pretty easy. We just set the magazine in the character's hand uh, back to visible by calling set active equals to true. And when we attach the magazine batch back to the weapon, um, we just need to get the active weapon again and we want to basically show the magazine uh, that's on the weapon so basically set that to visible by setting active to true and then we can finally destroy that magazine that's in the character's hand by calling destroy cool um, so if we just uh, show you how that looks <clears throat> so if I hit reload you can now see the character drops a new magazine and it's got physics so I can shoot at it um, and can keep dropping them like all day long <laughs> create like a pile of them um, and if I just like freeze frame for a second here yeah you can see that um, there is one magazine which is these are all the physics ones um, the character's hand if I can get to that somehow maybe not um, there's still the one on the weapon, uh, this one here, and there is also, yeah, how do I select the hand? I'm not sure how to, yeah, here it is. So there's actually three magazines in flight, one with physics, one in the character's hand, and one attached to the weapon. Um, but yeah, they're all just hidden and shown at uh, different, different points in time. Um, cool, so that's it for this section. Um, so the next section is just going to be... Uh, like right now we're kind of reloading just when we push R so we just need to attach like an ammo count uh, to the weapon and automatically reload when the ammo count uh, goes to zero okay I'll try to go uh, pretty speedy because this video is getting quite long so open up the Raycast weapon script and uh, just create two new properties one called the ammo count and another one called the clip size which is how much we will refill the ammo by uh, inside fire bullet we're just going to check that the um, if the ammo count is less than or equal to zero then we basically want to return because we've got no ammo left otherwise we want to decrement the ammo count that should be enough to uh, prevent us from shooting if we're out of ammo so inside the um, the reload <coughs> sorry inside the reload weapon script um, when we attach the magazine um, we can just refill the ammo count really easily by setting the ammo count equal to the clip size and um, one other thing to do actually just while I'm here is we need to clear this uh, this trigger I forgot to do that before um, just because otherwise 
when the reload animation finishes it might uh, potentially play it again um, so we can just call reset trigger um, just when we reattach the magazine cool um, and what else uh, so inside the update um, currently we're only reloading when we push R but we also want to reload if we're out of ammo so you can just get the uh, the current weapon inside the update script by calling get active weapon um, so if we have a weapon actually yeah we should probably check if we've got a weapon before we even try to reload uh, so yeah if we've got a weapon and we press R or the uh, the ammo count of the weapon is less than or equal to zero then we will automatically reload cool um, so I think that should be enough <clears throat> to to make the weapon automatically stop shooting when it's uh, out of ammo and yeah oh what the hell is happening I have no idea oh the, the weapon is uh, constantly out of ammo so it's just constantly reloading uh, and that's because I didn't set a, an ammo count so here so yeah set the ammo count to like 30 clip size to 30 and for the pistol I'll just use 15 15 maybe 8 8 is probably better whatever um, so yeah if I sorry just try that again now um, so if I hit shoot and fire roughly 30 bullets then it automatically reloads and now we can start shooting again and if I hit shoot yeah it actually um it will start shooting as soon as the magazine's attached which is before we actually bring the gun back up um, you could actually create another animation event right at the end of the animation to before you refill um, reload the the weapon but I'm just gonna ignore that for for this tutorial um, and the, the final bit is just adding some UI so we can can actually visualize um, the ammo count for the weapon so we'll do this inside the canvas object um, so just when I'm editing the canvas I like to have kind of them both open at once um, so I'm gonna create a new object called the ammo widget and this will have two children, one to store the, uh, the icon and another one to store uh, the text. <clears throat> Whoa, what's happening? If I go to 2D mode, yeah, I should be able to visualize this. So the icon that's gonna have an image component and uh, here's one I prepared earlier. This is my own artwork, thank you very much. <laughs> um, oh man. Yeah, okay, so if I just make that a little bit, oops, not that one, make that like a little bit smaller, just drag it, I don't know, over somewhere here, maybe it's okay, something like that, I'm no UI artist, sorry, um, and just for the text, I'll make that like a little bit smaller, let me just put like 50 or something in there. I'll center align it vertically and horizontally, change the color to like black, something like that. Yeah, that's good for illustration purposes. <laughs> and uh, now I need to create a new um, ammo widget script, which will be attached to the ammo widget here. And this thing just needs to get a reference to the text so it can update the, uh, the text on that label. So just delete all this stuff. Um, and because it's in text mesh, text mesh pro, it's in the TM pro namespace. Um, <clears throat> what's it called? TMP underscore text. Yeah, that's it. Ammo text is what I'll call it. And then create a new public function called like refresh, which, well, what happened there? Public function called, why is that auto completing? Oh, I'm not typing the return type. Refresh uh, int ammo count and we can just set the text on the text label equal to the ammo count and just need to call like two string on that to convert it to a string cool so now we just need to get a reference to this ammo widget inside the reload weapon scripts um, so ammo widget ammo widget and yeah basically um this is kind of a cheap way to do it is uh, inside update just check if we've got a weapon 
if that uh, weapon dot is firing is firing then we can just call refresh on the the ammo widget passing in the um, the ammo count of the weapon and also when we uh, reload it as well we need to <coughs> call refresh here so weapon dot ammo count and there's one final place where we need to update that ammo count and that's when we uh, switch weapons so inside the active weapon script we need to get a reference to this ammo widget again um, so just create another reference here and when we call equip weapon uh, what is it called? I thought I called it equip yeah equip weapon just call ammo widget dot refresh with that, uh, that new weapon and it's new ammo count so just assign the ammo widget to um, both the reload weapon script and the active weapon script like this and now if I just drag this back to here hit play hopefully everything works uh, I don't think I've handled the case where there is no weapon oh no what have I done ammo text oh yeah sorry I forgot to assign the um, the TMP text object to the ammo widget just uh, assign that text object to the ammo widget there cool that should be all the references updated so yeah you can see the uh, ammo count has gotten to 30 and it reduces stops at zero and refills when we uh, finish cool um, I've also got a pistol <laughs> uh animation and stuff hooked up but i think i'm going to leave that for this tutorial it's uh this, this is getting super long so here's the uh the pistol animation one i prepared earlier uh it's it's very similar to the um the assault yeah it's just uh got a slightly different sort of pose for for the um the way this kind of character holds holds the weapon um, but yeah, if you've uh, if you've made it through this whole uh, video and watched this whole thing, uh, that's amazing. And yeah, I really appreciate you watching. Um, if you if you like the video, if you've uh, learned some stuff, if uh, there's some questions you want to ask, just feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll try to try to get around to them. If I don't answer, it's probably because I don't know the answer. Um, so yeah, uh, good luck with your projects and thanks for watching. Um, please like and subscribe and share the video with your friends if, uh, if you found it useful. And yeah, we'll uh, see you again. All right, ka kite.